Hey everybody, and welcome to another video from the Electronic Armory. In the last couple of videos, we showed you how to open this door using a trigger volume, either by the player or by this table. The next thing I want to show you is how to create a little bit more robust animation in Unreal, and this can apply to things moving up or maybe levers or really any kind of animation sequence. So let's get started with that. So we want to go and open our our wall here in the up position, but we actually want to do so by uh, not such a linear motion, just not moving it straight up and down, but maybe a, affecting the wall. Maybe it comes up a little bit and then comes down and then up and then down. Just kind of see that it's it's struggling to move up in that direction. So the way that we're going to do that is using a timeline in our blueprint for our wall. So if you double click on that blueprint, we have our blueprint that we set up in the previous video. So if you haven't watched those yet, go ahead and uh, watch those before this video. Or if you're already familiar with blueprints and moving uh, stuff around using the move component to object, um, you can just start here. So we're actually going to replace this move component two with a, uh, a timeline. And so let's uh, just keep this around for right now. I'm going to right click and simply type in timeline in our node editor. We have the option to add a timeline. And let's give this a name right off the bat. And this is going to be called, uh, I don't know, let's just say struggle wall open, something like that. And this one has a whole lot of pins, a lot more than our move component too. It has a play pin, a play from start pin, a stop pin, a reverse pin, reverse from end, set new time. And then finally, the um, output pins are update, finished, and the direction. Okay, so if we have, after our camera shake, we want to go ahead and, and have this uh, timeline be executed. And this timeline will control the value from the floor to our end position, which is our, our top position. Um, uh, 300 centimeters is the value that we're using. So I'm going to pipe this pin into here and just say play from start. We play from the start of this timeline. And the timeline itself we want to edit. So I'm going to double click on this timeline and it'll open up a new tab at the top. We can always go back to our event graph by clicking on that tab. And then this is our timeline with the struggle wall opens, which is what we called it. I'm going to add a new uh, floating track here so that we can affect the value from 0 to 1 or mapping that against 0 to 300. Let's just show you what this looks like first. So add float track, this big uh, this big F here with the plus. And it's going to add a track that we can use keyframing along a duration. So in other words, over those four seconds, if I roll my mouse wheel up, we can um, zoom this out. And I'm going to uh, right click to drag this around and just just until I see four over here in our duration. So if you right click, we can add a keyframe at zero, and this will represent zero for our uh, the direction or the motion that our wall is going to take. So it's gonna start from zero, and then it's going to move up over four seconds. So let me just show you what these keyframes would look like. If you right click right about where zero, zero is, you can get this add key to curve float underscore zero, which is what just what the, the track is, the default name is. Up here in the time, I just want to make sure this starts at zero and the value is zero. So just zero those two values out and hit enter and that'll move our keyframe there. We then want to add another keyframe at value one for four seconds. So let's right click there and add another keyframe. Now this is pretty much what we have for our move component two node is it just moves from zero to one, wherever that happens to be, over time for seconds. So this doesn't really change anything that we've uh, already implemented. All right, so what we do want to do is we want to start opening the door, then kind of have it fall back down to the ground. Open the door, fall back down, but not so much. Open the door, just kind of have this nice up and down motion with, uh, with our motion here. So if we right click anywhere, let's just say uh, half a second, Going to add a new keyframe. I'm going to drag this up so it's going to open kind of fast. But then at one second, I'm going to right click and add another keyframe. You can 
make this absolute values, which is sometimes a good thing. Uh, make this 0.5 seconds, just to be precise. Maybe this wall starts to move down a little bit. And we're just going to add a whole bunch of keyframes to affect this wall motion. So we're going to add that up there, maybe have a little bit of a, a downward spike here. Maybe it comes down a little bit, goes up, comes down. So you can see that this is going to kind of be the up and down motion of our, our wall until it finally gets to value of one. Well, this is all great. These lines are linear. So if you right click on one of these keyframes, we can actually make it into uh, different curves. And so let's just go ahead and hit auto. You can kind of see that this, um, this now has a nice curvature to it. We can add that curvature. We can do like a break and that'll uh, break those so that we can affect how this curve actually gets affected. I can always change that back to a break. Or if you notice the keyboard shortcuts next to those one, two, and three, I'm going to hit three for a break. And I can, uh, you know, again, change these. Uh, that one doesn't work because this one needs to be three as well. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm just going to go hit, th hit three on all these and just kind of make it an up and down motion. And this will look really crazy once this gets implemented. Okay, so hit three on this one, three on this one. Okay, so yeah, again, pretty crazy. We can play with that all day long, but I'm going to go ahead and hit save, compile. And this is just called new track zero underscore zero, but that's that's fine for now. We're gonna go back to our event graph. So this is in this tab here. And so now with this new timeline, we have this new track underscore zero, which is new track zero. This is going to give us a float value, and that float value is going to come out as either a zero or anything between a one, a one and a zero. And we want to use that value to interpolate the movement of our wall over a time. And so that's a linear interpolation. And if you know anything about motion graphics, it just basically means move from point A to point B um, based on a value from zero to one. That's, that's the broad def definition of that. So let me just show you what this looks like and I'll kind of explain it as I go. If you type in LERP, which stands for Linear Interpolation, we want to do a uh, transform LERP. And what that means is we want to transform the location of our object from the ground to zero. So let's go ahead and click on LERP Transform, because there are actually different versions of the, um, the transforms. We have rotation LERPs and, and that sort of thing. OK, so point A to point B. But here's our alpha. The alpha represents that float value from 0 to 1. So we're going to pipe in that value from 0 to 1. And this will automatically figure out the time needed. This linear interpolation will figure out the time needed and what value of alpha to give us. OK, so the next thing is, what is point A? Well, it's simply just a 0, 0 reference. And, and basically, where our wall is, um, right now or at the start and so if we click on our wall what we can do is we can click uh, or move our mouse over here and hit control w and that will copy that node over there and i'm going to actually just pipe this out and just say um, get location and we want the relative location And I'm going to drag this down here, actually. And now you can see that these nodes, uh, well, this one is a, a vector. Um, so it's going to give us a vector. And we can't necessarily pipe in a vector to a transform. But if we do, it'll just convert it from a vector to a transform. So that's what this little node is in between here. So that's OK. OK, so that's the initial value of where our wall is. And then where do we want? it to go. Well, we want it to go up 300, which we defined over here. So we have to redefine this. And actually, I'm going to move this. I'm going to do a little bit of reorganizing here to keep our 
node set up clean. So B, I'm just going to drag off that B to place a new node. And the nice thing about doing this one is it, with our context, context select sensitive checkbox here, it'll only show us valuable nodes that we may want to do, namely make transform, because we're dragging this off of a transform node. And here we can simply set up the location to be 300. Okay, so that will transform it from point A to point B. And because our wall is actually at 000, zero, zero uh, this might actually just work if we didn't have that in there. Uh, but don't quote me on that. You can test that out if you want to. Um, okay, and then finally our, our lerp uh, would actually have to go into a transform. So I didn't set that up. So let me do that real quick. So the return value of this lerp and it is going to again, be a translation or a lerp between point A and point B based on this value here. So we're gonna drag this node off and it's going to say, um, well, it's a transform. Um, we're just gonna say, uh, drag off this wall component and say uh, transform. Uh, maybe I should do um, set transform. Here. Okay, so using again our wall, we have to we want to set the transform that comes out of this. Return transform. So whatever value is currently coming out of our lerp, um, which again will translate between A and B based on this alpha, up and down, up and down, up and down, into our new transform for our wall. So that's just a fancy way of saying move our wall, set the transform on it um, to some value based on our timeline. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we've essentially duplicated what our move component to node has done, but we forgot one thing and that's to actually hook up our set relative translation or transformation, uh, transform, excuse me, down there. So I'm actually gonna move these down just a hair and this is kind of getting in the way. So another tip to clean this up is if you double click somewhere on this line, it'll create just kind of a, a rerouting node. And so you can just make sharper uh, lines down here so that we can move, oops, uh, hit escape, move these down. Cause now I want to connect one of these exact pins to our set relative transform. And on our timeline, it's going to continuously update the value of this. And when we do our transform, we're not just saying go from zero to one or zero to 300, we're actually doing that in increments. So we're gonna have that get updated every time. And it's gonna get the alpha value at the current, what the current update is, and again, just move it up incrementally. So that's why we have an update pin. Okay, so once we've uh, updated this pin here, uh, what's going to happen is our, our wall location is actually going to change and because this is gonna get updated multiple times, that it's going to ask our wall, hey, what's your current location? What's your current location? Well, as it moves up, it's going to do a linear interpolation on that new value. And so this is actually gonna move it up way faster than what we actually want it to do. So if we hit play, let me show you what, what happens. It's going to just move up really, really quickly. And that's not what we want. So couple ways of fixing this little bug is I'm going to not get its current location but instead delete that and since I kind of know that it's zero zero what we can do is we can pull this off and just do a, a make transform here and just set this as zero 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 or one 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 for all these values just as the default here or a, probably a better way is to store this initial wall uh, value in the variable here so that we know where it starts because maybe it starts halfway open and we're just gonna go from halfway up to um, uh, up to that 300. But this will suffice for our needs. Uh, just to show you that little bug that I, I found there. Um, again, with our, our struggle wall open node here, this gets updated multiple times as opposed to our move component up where we could pipe in this value, uh, it'll get the initial value, just handle that for us. So this one's a little bit more complicated as a setup. So I can just highlight these, right click and just say uh, create comment. And this is going to move wall up on timeline. Now let's, 
Okay, so we just wrapped this in a comment and let's go ahead and play test this to see if this works. We're gonna go ahead and hit play and let's watch our wall struggle to move up. So it goes down, up, down, up, up, down, and after four seconds, there it goes. So obviously you might wanna make that movement a little more subtle and you know make it look better let's say but hopefully you found this video useful you got the idea and if you like this content hit the like button if you want to see more of it hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video thanks